Hello and welcome to Social Media Weekly episode 7th July 2020. Social Media Weekly is brought to you by Virtual Palace Marketing, rehumanizing your marketing experience. My name is Sean. This week's news, ads revolt in Facebook. India bans TikTok. Facebook responds to stop hate for profit. Instagram experiments on giving stories more visibility. Instagram test reels in India. Back to the stories. Ads revolt in Facebook. One by one, large American firms have been boycotting Facebook ads. The movement called for hashtag stop hate for profit uh, that calls for changes against racism and hateful content on social media. Other companies who agree to pull out of Facebook ads include REI, The North Face, Patagonia, Unilever, Verizon, PNG, and more. Some of them said even Coca-Cola and all that as well. So all essentially some of the largest MNCs that are based in America. Some of them said they will refrain from spending ads until the end of July, but there are also some who said that they will continue to, they will extend this until the end of the year. Uh, It all started when Trump lost control of his post on social media, plus the backlash from recent death of George Floyd in the hands of a police officer. Uh, Well, just to give you a gist of this in case you have been living under a rock for a long time, what happened is uh, George Floyd, who who was a black man, uh, was killed by a police officer with the knees on the neck. Uh, for about the video ran the there was a video ran for nine minutes and he was essentially choked to death in public, and that sparked an outrage. It's not the first time because the police forces in America have been very mm, uncontrollable in a sense when it comes to dealing with uh people of color, and this was kind of like the tipping point that started another round of anti-racism protests and then uh, Trump kind of got pissed off which is what he does all the time and started tweeting stuff and posting Facebook posts which said things that he's not supposed to say especially when it comes to racism and um, he also added he also included this reverse or a downward facing triangle red triangle which was um, popularized back in the days of the Nazi, where they put it on concentration camps. So what happened after that was a lot of social media platforms, uh, YouTube, Twitter, uh, Snapchat, Reddit, they started to limit the reach of Trump's tweets, of uh, Trump's posts, and some even gone to the extent of completely banning the accounts outright as well. But Facebook kind of took a stand and they said, you know what, we're not going to do anything about it. We want to protect freedom of speech. We want to protect, um, you know, a discussion of, I don't know. I, I don't know how he puts it, but it, nobody can get, uh, nobody can get uh, bought by that kind of explanation. At the end of the day, Facebook just want to make money, right? They, they have no sense of humanity in them. So in any case, what happens was that um, then big companies, big American companies started to boycott Facebook ads by stopping advertisement budgets on the platform. Um, It started off kind of like a for month month thing. And then some of them said that they might continue to to go on for the rest of the year. And so in the short run, it's nothing actually. Um, Because um, Facebook's advertisement, majority of Facebook's advertisement profit does not come from big companies. It comes from small companies. This was during the time when advertisement platforms like Yahoo uh, and all these offline advertisement agencies, they only take ads if you have a minimum budget, maybe a few hundred thousand or so. Then when Google came about, um, they said, you know what? You got three bucks, I'll take a three bucks, right? You got five bucks, I'll take a five bucks. I will give you your five bucks worth of ads. It may not be much, but what happens is because of that, more and more micro and SME companies participate in online advertisements and the volume, 95% of advertisements come from smaller companies. So it, to give you a kind of perspective, right? All these major largest companies in America, which can account for probably the largest companies in the world as well, 
did all the boycott and Facebook only and this movement only shaved off what 7% of Facebook's overall ad revenue 7% that's like rounding figure for them and it goes to show how Facebook how resilient Facebook is and how they are unable to be toppled by big companies uh, it takes a lot of numbers in order to get Facebook to budge uh, but what is going to happen is not what's in the short run what's going to happen is what's going to go on in the mid run and the long run which is when there are millions and millions of or billions of peop- of dollars US dollars are, uh, being taken away from Facebook and Instagram there will be a market for them to go into and once and once the money is out of Facebook and Instagram let's say right um, in terms of ads this opportunity will arise and there will be someone that will take advantage of it and will fill that gap. So in the short run, Facebook may, may not need to be worried, but in the mid to long run, depending on how the gap is filled, Facebook should be worried. So if I was Facebook, I wouldn't care so much about the profits, but I will care about keeping them, getting them back here. So which means um, changing my policies. Right. Next up, India bans TikTok. People from TikTok's second largest market woke up on the morning of June 30th to find their TikTok apps inaccessible. Instead of viral dance lip sync videos, they see error messages. This is part of India's move to block 59 apps that apparently raise security and privacy concerns. It claims TikTok and 58 other apps were, uh, quote, compiling data for mining and profiling by element hostile to national security and defense of India. There are many contrasting arguments comparing TikTok's data collection methods to the likes of Google, Facebook, and Amazon. But one thing is certain, uh, Google, Facebook, and Amazon are constantly being checked and everything they do is constantly, is under microscopic eyes of a lot of third-party organizations, right? And they will get reported and uh, and pressured by by legal bodies and everything. So all the while, TikTok is basically going around unchecked, uh, mainly because a lot of these third party companies or organizations um, are from the home country where these um, Google, Facebook, and Amazon are. And when their people are being exploited, these organizations will come out and they will kind of like you know blow the whistle on what's going on but tiktok being a chinese company and as far as we know chinese companies cannot be have their whistle blown by the people because there is very little um protection on these regards for the people i mean so so the protection lies on the, the corporations instead of the people so they can essentially do a lot of stuff that we don't know about and get away with it uh, TikTok CEO Kevin Mayer, who was, I think, um, who was just recently announced, what, a couple of months ago, I think? Uh, he later that week announced that the company will do everything in its power to restore the country's confidence in the app. Um, we don't know what it is that he's doing. Uh, he also says that they are complying with all the requirements of India, but I'm pretty sure if India were to block it, then there has to be something. But there is another issue as well because of the 59 apps, many of the other apps were actually uh, Chinese apps, which includes WeChat and uh, various ads by Alibaba. So it may feel as if it is now a political thing rather than a national security thing. Maybe there is no issue with um, TikTok, but because India is... um, going through this border dispute with China and they don't want China to have information or or backdoor information on what's going on in India. So they just say, you know, we're just going to block everything first and then until this thing is sorted. But they are not willing to publicly divulge that information. Uh, But we do know that WeChat, all of WeChat's data goes into the uh, Chinese eyes. There is no such thing as encryption. There's no such thing as privacy. When you're using WeChat, uh, but we don't know if Alibaba apps work the same as well. Facebook responds to hashtag stop hate for profit. 
The company announced that it will boost the visibility of posts that's original while demoting publications that clearly don't clearly credit their editorial staff. Uh, this is their response to a number of high-profile companies pulling ads from the platform to take a stand against hate speech and misinformation. So instead of removing posts, Facebook will merely label them and also demote their reach. With enough budget, I'm pretty sure the reach will possibly go quite, still go quite far because it's not as if they're removing it, right? They're just demoting the organic reach of it. I put, what, $100 in it? It will go far. So it's kind of like not really solving the problem. Um, there's a problem now with how, the, how Facebook categorizes newsworthiness of a post. Usually, Facebook will prioritize posts shared by friends. That's not going to change. So even if this content that is uh, labeled hate speech or misinformation is shared by a friend, it's still going to reach your newsfeed. On top of that, Facebook will look out for, authors, uh, for the author of article and then they will also scan websites for pages about the, artic about the author itself. So let's say if you run a publication or if you run a website that want to have your content out, uh, have a b better reach than others and reduce the risk of it being labeled misinformation, please include your author's details on your website. Like about Sean, something like that. So what happens is then Facebook will use their AI to scan for this data on the website. And then when you write the article, write it, uh, always include the author's name by Sean. So it increases the chance of it being legitim legitimized or reduce the chance of it being demoted. But in any case, I feel that it's a lazy way of addressing the problem and it clearly lacks commitment as well. It's just like saying, oh, you know what? We've got a problem. Let's just do this little bit to make them feel happy, which is almost nothing at all because it's not foolproof. Um, it didn't go through a proper meeting and decision-making process. It kind of like is the kind of stuff where you do like a 10-minute con call after dinner or something to just make a decision on it. And I don't think this is going to do well in terms of Facebook, uh, in, in terms of PR for Facebook. And it's not going to stop the companies from not advertising on Facebook. Instagram experiments on giving stories more visibilities. Instagram stories has been gaining more reach and engagement than posts. So it only makes sense that the feature gets more attention and screen real estate as well, right? The app has been spotted testing a version of Instagram where the entire screen is filled with story bubbles. Right now, bubbles are only located at the top part where you have to scroll sideways to see everything. and You can't see everything at one glance. And most of the time, we don't know who posted new stories until you know we reach it in the as it continues to go one by one so we can't actually like you know pick and choose what we want to see soon we may have one dedicated page filled with story bubbles only and very soon instagram will become snapchat because that's what snapchat has been doing for a long time now uh, i believe instagram should focus on stories more than posts because stories are getting more engagement anyway and stories are more entertaining and exciting because posts has become a little bit more too curated, too coiffed and too perfect for social media. It just feels like a magazine site now instead of a user-generated platform. And I personally love stories a lot more. Instagram tests reels in India. Facebook is taking advantage of India's recent ban on TikTok by introducing a TikTok clone in the market. Reels is similar to TikTok in many ways, including the part where users can insert popular music into their 15-second reels. This also comes after Facebook announced the closure of its previous TikTok clone called Lasso. It's not clear why the company decided to shut down an app that already has traction in many markets and then release a new one, but absolutely similar. Um, could be a branding thing because Lasso was branded by Facebook and Reels is called Instagram Reels. Maybe the architecture is different. Um, I don't have enough information to make a proper assessment on that, but so it will just be purely on assumption. And but essentially, in terms of front end usage, it's the same. Reels is Lasso. Lasso is Reels. 
but Lasso has been running in a lot of test markets for a, a little over a year now and it has a lot more active users than Reels and so I don't know but it does make a good move Facebook did make a good move by going into India because we did say earlier that, that India banned TikTok and now that Instagram goes in, fills in the gap and they could become the new status quo, the new standard um, of for uh, TikTok equivalent. All right, so that's all for this week's Social Media Weekly. Social Media Weekly, weekly Podcast is available on Anchor FM, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and more. Our full videos are available on YouTube and we post bits and clips on Instagram and Facebook. This is Social Media Weekly, episode 7 July 2020. My name is Sean. Au revoir.